Hey, Dennis Tubergen here with another video economic update. It's Friday afternoon, March 9, 2018. I want to talk to you today about um, a rather interesting interview that was done with an Australian publication uh, with Bill Gates, who everybody knows as the founder of Microsoft. And I have the article up on the screen, it says, Bill Gates believes another financial crisis is coming. In an Ask Me Anything interview, the Microsoft co-founder was asked this question. Do you think in the near future we'll have another financial crisis similar to the one in 2008? Mr. Gates, whose net worth is currently around $91.7 billion, replied, yes, it's hard to say when, but this is a certainty. Mr. Gates was asked, do you think we'll have another financial crisis like the one we had in 2008? Mr. Gates said, yes, it's hard to say when, but this is a certainty. The 2008 financial crisis, which began in the United States mortgage market and quickly spread across the globe, was the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression, resulting in 8.7 million jobs being lost in the U.S., and about 250,000 in Australia, which is where this uh, article actually uh, was published. Mr. Gates said his friend, Berkshire Hathaway founder Warren Buffett, had talked about this, and he understands this area far better than I do. And at the bottom of the page, a growing number of experts have sounded alarm bells for the global economy, including formal, former coalition advisor John Adams, who last month identified 10 signs of a looming economic Armageddon and controversial demographer Harry Dent. So what causes financial crisis? What causes stock market crashes? What causes jobs to be lost? Well, the, the cause is really not discussed all that much, but if you think about what I'm about to say, I think you'll agree. The cause is really too much debt. Now to understand this, you have to understand that most money today is debt. Most assets are debt. I have an asset because someone else owes me money and someone else has an asset because someone else owes them money. The simplest example of this, of course, is a bank. And the, the, the crisis that Mr. Gates talked about in this article was really brought on by the fact that banks had huge derivative exposure and banks made a lot of subprime mortgage loans. They made loans to people that arguably weren't qualified to borrow the money in the first place. And when those people couldn't pay back the loans, the bank lost assets. See, the bank has as assets debt. And that debt is an asset as long as someone can pay back the debt. As soon as someone decides not to pay back the debt or can't pay back the debt, now, money disappears from the financial system. When money disappears from the financial system because a bank loses money, that means a bank doesn't have more money to loan. Or if someone can't pay me back, I can't pay someone else back. It's a, it's a cycle that feeds on itself. So when debt levels get too high, that's when we see the, the risk of a financial crisis increase. Now, in Jim Willie's hat trick letter uh, this month in February, which is one of the, the newsletters I read every month, and uh, you can check it out at goldenjackass.com, rather colorful name uh, or, or web address, Jim uh, has a, a lot of really good perspectives on a lot of different topics, and this is from his newsletter. By the fourth quarter of 2000, global debt was at $87 trillion. By the fourth quarter of 2007, global debt was at $142 trillion. By the fourth quarter of 2014, global debt moved to $199 trillion. And by the third quarter of 2017, global debt zoomed to a shocking $233 trillion. He says the entire global system is debt dependent. That's certainly true. And uh, we believe that Mr. Gates in this article is correct. Because of the high levels of debt that exist, we will likely see a financial crisis. I'd encourage you guys to check out your bank safety ratings. Make sure you're dealing with banks that uh, have high safety ratings. Uh, because if there are banking failures again, and we're predicting that there probably will be, not all banks will fail. Also, take a conservative posture in your approach to investing. That's today's video economic update. I'm Dennis Tubergen.